Tories today are, are looking very bad in the polls. They've got their worst ever defeat, according to the latest poll, uh, which suggests they are going to get, uh, oh, Labour will get a 256 strong majority. Tories hitting back, saying, look, inflation figures have come down. That's all looking good, although not so good on the migrant boats. 882 channel migrants crossed uh, on boats yesterday. But they've hit out at Labour's, they say, secret tax plans. This idea that there are six different taxes that Keir Starmer and others are looking at to raise. And when they say they have no plans for, uh, for tax rises, that's what they're secretly going to do. Um, how much should we believe that? Well, I'm a veteran Labour Party activist, as you as you know. And um, what happens when we formulate a manifesto? It isn't done in a back room. It's done in a, a big room uh, called the Clause 5 meeting. And the various best, vested interests in the party bring their proposals. They write them down. They tend to be on a piece of paper. And this one was rejected. Uh, I can see why the people uh, proposing it want to do it, you know, because... We do, we do need to find ways of paying for to improve our public services. Although I take what your previous caller before the break said, that the NHS needs reform itself. It needs to be performing better with the money it has. The thing is, these proposals were rejected. And I know from bitter experience uh, as a Labour Party activist, what happens when your proposal gets rejected? It's rejected. It's not going to happen. Um, it's, it's fair to say they haven't ruled out certain things. Yeah. Uh, but these specific proposals are not a secret tax dossier of Labour. Well, but there except, except that they're from a group of MPs, the Tribune group of MPs, of which Keir Starmer is a member, also Yvette Cooper, David Lammy. So three of the most senior figures who would be in uh, a Labour cabinet if they win, as the poll suggests they will, on the 4th of July. Um, and they're the very sort of taxes which people have been asking about. And we haven't had any definitive answers. What we keep hearing yeah. is we have no plans. Mind you, hear the same thing from the Tories as well and other parties. Parties, uh, but no plans. You and I both know, look, I followed you for years when you were working at the BBC, doing a lot of uh, economics analysis as well. You know as well as I do, the numbers don't add up. All the all the economic woes that we're in right now with the Conservative government, they don't disappear on July the 50th as a Labour government. They want to deliver better public services, this, that, this, that. Labour know perfectly well that they're going to have to find the money somewhere. And if we don't get this elusive growth, and I don't know where it's coming from because no one's been able to deliver it for the last 20 years, um, then, then taxes will go up. Well, look, um, if Keir Starmer wanted to get a plan to raise uh, inheritance tax into the manifesto, he wouldn't have to go through a group that, you know, for all the fact that there are the Yvette and, and David Lamy are members of it, it's not a central group in Labour right now. Um, it's, uh, he wouldn't have to go through a group. He'd just put it in. Uh, you know, it's the same with David Lamy. Um, as to the question of do the numbers add up? Well, the government's own numbers don't add up. This is the problem I have as an e economics journalist, that a lot of the balancing the books that Jeremy Hunt has proposed happens because we have severe cuts in public services over the next five years. But the years. IFS has said the same about Labour. OK, well, Labour are accepting the general envelope of where, of where it's going. And as you suggest, they believe that if we can boost growth early on in the life of the parliament, some of these problems, don't, they don't go away, but they are reduced. You know, we today, right now, 2% inflation, great, we've hit the target, at the cost of what? 0% growth. The, the economy is stagnating. Now, actually, a lot of, a lot of people, who, maybe people even in their 20s and early 30s, don't remember a time and I'm sure you do, because we're both on different sides of politics, but we both we both experienced it. There was a time in the 1990s when on the both Conservative and Labour, you had real growth in wages, in productivity mm -hmm. and in well-being. And you've got to believe that that could come back. It's and, not a week and a prayer. No, and, that, and it's, that's a major issue. It. Certainly with our audience, when they get in touch, an awful lot of our audience will say, you know, it's just about nothing works in this country. We're, we're, we're in managed decline. I don't know what changes under Labour, though, because we've been told, for instance, things like mass immigration is part of the solution to, to issues. We're told Labour now want to uh, cut immigration an awful lot. But with mass immigration for the last 20 years, we've had huge numbers of people. We haven't delivered uh, any growth at all. So you, what, what are we suddenly going to do that's suddenly well, going you, to make a difference? Look, I don't have a problem in principle with people who come here to work and, and the people who come here to seek refuge as well. The problem about immigration is that what we've done is we've fueled growth, the top line figure, GDP, by just adding people. And it doesn't add wealth. It doesn't add well-being. And so you've got to, you know, what you've got to, and Labour is committed to this, 
believe that you can raise the general level of economic growth for everybody. That is GDP per capita. Well, you can't do that if you keep bringing in more people, but you don't build any more houses and you don't build any Absolutely. more hospitals. Uh, you know, well, you know, when would Labour have done that? You may, you may have noticed that one of their slogans is get Britain building. And what they need to do, and I'm afraid there will be losers from this, and the losers might be people listening to this programme. The losers will be people who routinely object to every building uh, proposal. Uh, because Labour is, and it's committed to sweeping away obstacles to planning, building on the edge of the greenfield, the, the so-called grey field, uh, the grey, grey belt. And we, the, the party I'm, I'm in, really are committed to building a lot okay. of housing. And so that will provide employment. I mean, if there are houses, we, I want a whole new whole new towns built, but I also want us to, you know, to, to perhaps not be bringing in huge numbers of new people into <laughs> Without without the permission of the British people, can I just come back to something else that Keir Starmer said yesterday? He talked about he's asked his definition of working people because he says he won't raise taxes on working people. And again, a lot of people vote for higher taxes, but usually for him and her over there, those rich yeah, people yeah. over there, the, the, those business people over there, those overseas people. They don't expect the taxes to hit them. It's very I don't people ever other than national insurance rise by one pence. Uh, in the pound uh, under Tony Blair, do people ever vote for tax rises? And of course, at the time, the polling showed that actually people thought they genuinely thought their taxes were going up by one pence, not one percentage point. Um, but uh, yesterday, Trier Starmer was asked, who does he mean by working people? He said, people who earn their living rely on our services. Well, I mean, that's pretty much all of us, isn't it? But he said, and don't really have the ability to write a check when they get into trouble, i.e. people who don't have savings. Well, 30% of the country don't have any savings. Some of those people are you know, profligate. Lots of those people have been on low wages for a very long time or well, they're too young to restart saving. Vast majority of people in this country have savings. We don't count as working people. So here our taxes are going to go no. up. Isn't that what he's saying? I don't I don't think that's what he meant. And if he did, you know, let, let's I, I, I wouldn't that wouldn't be my definition. My definition of working people is people who had who in order to live, to get to the end of the week, the end of the month, the end of the year, have to go to work and don't have so much savings that they can live That's off the virtually interest. virtually everybody. Well, no, well, no. You see, actually, you know, if you look at the profession Keir Starmer's part of, the senior legal profession, the the, the, the KCs, the yeah. barristers, you know, there, there'll, be, there'll be some of them at the start of their career, they fit what I've just said, you know, they, they have to get to the end of the month balancing the books. But to be honest, somebody somebody in their 50s and 60s who's a, who's a, a KC will probably be in a position where they can write a cheque to solve problems uh, or they ha can can dig into a lot of money. And we, we're not against such people. I mean, it's great that they exist. It's great. Isn't that it terrible that people work hard and do well and no, earn no, money no, and no, pay taxes and put we savings got, away? Have, oh, terrible people. No problem people. whatsoever with that. It's great that such people exist. It's just that when we're saying we won't raise taxes, the number one, this first set of people whose taxes are not going to be raised, full stop, are people who work to live. That is people paying national insurance, income That's tax. Most people in this country. Right. Can I ask you, do you think if Boris Johnson decided not to go on holiday again, far bit for me to criticise people who go on holiday until the election and actually campaign for the Tories. Would that win the Tories more seats? Would the, would the Labour Party, would you as a Labour Party activist be worried about Boris Johnson returning to the campaign trail and referring to returning to our TV screens? Short answer, no. Uh, I think the problem is, is in politics, everyone has a shelf life, don't they? And Boris has sort of ex exceeded his shelf life. Um, he's quite happy off there. I was at a, 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 a business conference yesterday where he set, sent a little video, uh, a little video address. And, um, you know, the business people sitting around me were quite shocked at the state of his attire. Let me put it that way. He, he had an open shirt and his hair looked more than usually uh, a mess. So I think he's enjoying whatever it is that's messing up his hair. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Mason, really appreciate you joining us. Thank you very much indeed. 10.46 is the time. Uh, uh, Benedict Spencer listening to that. I mean, the definition of the working people thing. Mm. It is how it is. Like, well, people who can... I mean, I, I'm sorry. if you know, People have been responsible. I think about members of my own family, my in-laws and things, you know, worked in, never, you know, never been on high wages, ordinary, totally ordinary incomes, working in the public sector, um, mm. you know, but saved and been good. Well, they could write a cheque to help them out if they need to because they've been really responsible and worked every day. Well, that's exactly the thing, isn't it? You know, there are some people who will work their whole lives and won't be able to put money away because it's just not in their nature to. They go out and they spend it straight mm. away. They're doing the right thing. But are they sort of, you know, for the, for the economy, for growing the economy, does that make them more worthy than people who don't go out and spend? I would have thought not. You want to be encouraging uh, financial responsibility. If only we had a little bit more of that in government, things might not that be might the same. That might be a bad thing indeed. Exactly.